Hello everyone, Namaste. Welcome to my channel Academic Tuber. Today we are going to discuss Unit 17 from Grade 8 Science that is Living Beings. Before that, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe this channel and for more updates hit the bell icon. If you want more videos related with this, please like and do share this video among your friends and also don't forget to give your valuable response in comment section. Here in this unit, we are going to discuss some microscopic organisms, bacteria, virus, fungi. After that, we are going to discuss modification of different parts of plants, seed and its types, structure of seed, monocot and dicot seed, function of seed, dispersal of seed, germination of seed, life cycle of flowering plants, different parts of flower, pollination and fertilization. Microscopic organisms those organisms which cannot be seen through our naked eyes but can be seen through microscope are called microscopic organisms example bacteria virus protozoa etc bacteria bacteria are microscopic organisms which can survive in air water soil ice plants animals etc for the first time Anton van Leeuwenhoek discovered bacteria in 1676 AD. Structure of bacteria. The structure of bacteria is very simple. It contains the protoplast, which is a living substance surrounded by a non-living cell wall and a thin membrane called plasma membrane. The cell of bacteria does not contain membrane-bound cell organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast. There is a single molecule of DNA attached to the cell membrane. Golgi complex and plastids are also absent but ribosomes are present. Some bacteria contain flagella that helps in the locomotion. Bacteria are the most primitive and smallest cellular organism. They are single cell and usually spherical, rod-like or spiral in shape. Their average size ranges from 0.5 to 10 microns. They contain a distinct cell wall made up of proteins and carbohydrates and generally they contain thread-like structures originated from the cytoplasm. The nucleus is not covered by nuclear membrane. The nuclear material is present in the form of staining bodies called chromatin materials. Four shapes of bacteria. The four shapes of bacteria are spherical, rod shape, coiled, and comma shaped. Beneficial effects of bacteria. Some bacteria they are found in the root of leguminous plants, example rhizobium. They help in balancing nitrogen cycle of environment. They decompose dead and decayed things and make soil fertile. Harmful effects of bacteria. Some bacteria causes diseases like cholera, pneumonia, typhoid, diarrhea, etc. Bacteria also causes the rotting and decaying of fruits, vegetables, etc. Virus Virus are the smallest and possibly the most primitive unicellular organism. Living characteristics of virus Viruses contain genetic material that is either DNA or RNA. They, con they can infect and attack other organisms. Non-living characteristics of viruses. They do not contain a complete nucleus and they can be crystallized as a non-living things. Types of viruses. There are three types of viruses on the basis of host. First one, plant virus that infect plants, example, tobacco mosaic virus. Second one, animal virus that infects animals, example, rhinovirus, rabies, etc. Third one is bacteriophage virus that infects bacteria. Viruses are transmitted through air, water, and food to human and causes different diseases like common cold, mumps, measles, polio, rabies etc plant virus plant virus the viruses that attack plants are called plant viruses 
animal viruses. The viruses that attack animal tissue are called animal viruses. Bacteriophage virus. The virus that attack bacteria and destroy their nuclear material is called bacteriophage virus. Virus can be divided into DNA virus and RNA virus on the basis of nucleic acid. So here are a few important questions from this topic virus. First one, viruses are called obligatory parasites. Why? Viruses, they are called obligatory parasites because they can reproduce only inside the specific cell of living host. Next question, viruses are kept in borderline of living beings and non-living beings. Why? Viruses, they are kept in borderline of living beings and non-living beings because they show both the characteristics of living beings and non-living beings. And finally, here it comes fungi. Fungi, they are the non-green thallophytes without chlorophyll. Example, mushroom, yeast, mucor, etc. Characteristics of fungi. Plant body is thallus, that is without root, stem and leaves. Cell wall is made of cellulose. Fungi contain eukaryotic cells which may contain more than one nucleus. Advantages of fungi. Fungi act on dead bodies and decompose them. Thus, they help to increase the fertility of soil. Some fungi like penicillin are used as antibiotics. Yeasts are used in wine industries and bakeries whereas mushrooms are used as valuable food sources for human beings. Why are fungi called saprophytes? So this is important question from this heading fungi. Fungi they are called saprophytes because they get nutrition from dead and decayed organic matter. Fungi are made up of filaments and these filaments are called hyphae. Hyphae are the thread like filaments that make up a multicellular fungus and release enzymes to absorb nutrients from food sources. Fungi reproduce asexually by budding, fragmentation, and sporulation. Harmful effects of fungi. They cause diseases like ringworm, ear and lung infection in humans. They damage and decay fruits, vegetables, bears, food, leather, etc. Modification of parts of plants. The root, stem, and leaves of different plants are modified to perform various functions and adapt in their habitat. This process is called modification of parts of plants. Root. The underground part of plant is called root. And the major functions of root are to fix the plant body firmly to the soil, to absorb water and minerals from the soil, to hold to hold the soil together. Types of root system. There are two types of root system. They are taproot system and fibrous root system. Modification of roots. Roots of plants are modified for storage of food, example carrot, radish, turnips, etc. For mechanical support, example banyan, people, etc and for vital functions. Roots of aquatic plants help to float, example hydrilla, water hyacinth, etc. Roots of parasitic plants absorb nutrients from their living host. Esteem. The part of plant above the soil is called esteem. Modification of esteem. Esteem of plants are modified for storage of food, example onion, garlic, potato, ginger, etc. For climbing, example cucumber, pumpkin, bittergourd, etc. And for protection, example cactus, aloe vera, etc. Leaves. The flat green part of plant is called leaves. Modification of leaves. Leaves of plants are modified for storage of food, example cabbage, spinach, etc. Leaves is modified into tendrils that support the plants to climb, example pea plant. Leaves are modified into thorns that reduce the loss of water, example prickly pear. Leaves are modified for catching insects in insectivorous plants, example pitcher plant, 
Venus flytrap, bladderwort, etc. Seed. A ripened ovule of a flowering plant is called seed. Function of seed. To produce new plants, to store food materials, seed coat helps in protection of embryo. Types of seed. There are two types of seeds. They are monocotyledonous seed and dicotyledonous seed. Monocotyledonous seed. The seeds having only one cotyledon are called monocotyledonous seed. Example, seeds of maize, paddy, wheat, barley, millet, etc. Characteristics of monocotyledonous seeds. A seed contains only one cotyledon. Endosperm is present. Pumule is very small. Embryo is small. Dicotyledonous seed. The seeds having two cotyledons are called dicotyledonous seed. Example, seeds of pea, mango, bean, gram, apple, mustard, orange, etc. Characteristics of dicotyledonous seed. A seed contains two cotyledons, endosperm is absent, pumil is large, and embryo is large. Embryo. The baby plant is called embryo. It has two parts. First one radical or future root. Second one pumule or future stem. Now we are going to discuss some differences between monocotyledonous seed and dicotyledonous seed. Monocotyledonous seed. It contains only one cotyledon, whereas dicotyledonous seed they contain two cotyledons. In monocotyledonous seed, endosperm is present, whereas in dicotyledonous seed, endosperm is absent. In monocotyledonous seed, hilum and micropyle are not visible, whereas in dicotyledonous seed, hilum and micropyle they are visible. Embryo is small in monocotyledonous seed, whereas embryo it is large in dicotyledonous seed. Pumule is very small in monocotyledonous seed, whereas pumule it is large in dicotyledonous seed. In monocotyledonous seed, seed coat and fruit coat are, are, are attached to form whole grains. Separate seed is absent, whereas in dicotyledonous seed, Seeds present separately inside pores. Fruit. The ripened ovary of seed bearing plant is called fruit. Function of fruit. Fruit protects the seed and embryo. It stores food materials. It helps in dispersal of seed. Dispersal of seed. The movement or transport of seeds away from the parent plant is called dispersal of seed. There are various methods of dispersal of seed. So here we are going to discuss few. First one by wind. Seeds of some plants are very light, having hairy or fluffy parachute-like structure. They are dispersed by winds. Example: seeds of simal, cotton dandelions etc are dispersed by wind second one by water seeds of coconuts lotus water lily beetle nose etc are dispersed by water by explosion of fruits some fruits brush with a sudden jerk so that the seeds are scattered on all sides example seeds of sesame pea lady's finger etc Fourth one by animals. Seeds of some plants are provided with hooks, barbs, spines, stuff, hairs, etc. on their surface which attach with the body of animals and carry to long distance. And finally by human beings. Human transport fruits and seed from one place to another and help in dispersal of seed. Example seeds of most fruits, flower, crops, vegetable, etc. 
germination of seed. The process of developing plants from seed under favorable environment is called germination of seed. And the essential condition for germination of seed are water, air, suitable temperature and sunlight. Now we are going to uh, perform one experiment to prove that adequate amount of air, water and temperature is essential for germination of seed. So to carry out this experiment we need some materials which are wood, bean, seed, beaker, water etc. Procedure. We have to take three bean seeds and tie them on a piece of a wood. Now we have to keep the wood in a beaker containing water in such a way that one seed is completely immersed in water, the middle one is half immersed and the upper one and the uppermost one is in air as shown in the figure. Then we should leave the beaker in sunlight for three to four days. After three to four days we observe that germination of only middle seed as it gives all essential conditions that is air water and temperature and finally so we can we can uh, we can conclude that air water and temperature they all are essential for germination of seed so here is one question what is the source of food for germinating seed and the answer is endosperm endosperm it is the source of food for germinating seed life cycle the series of forms into which a living organism changes as it develops is called life cycle. Flower. It is the reproductive part of plant. Flower. It has four parts. They are calyx, corolla, androsium and gynosium. Calyx. It is the outermost hole of a flower. Its major function is to protect the flower in body stage and the unit of calyx is called sepal. Corolla. It is the second hole of a flower and its major function is to attract insects and help in pollination and the unit of corolla is called petal. Androsium. It is the third hole and male part of flower and the unit of androsium is called Istamin. Istamin has two parts that is filament and anther and the function of anther is to produce male gametes called pollen grains. Gynosium. It is the innermost hole and female part of flower. Unit of gynosium is called pistil or carpel. Pistil or carpel has three parts that is stigma, style and ovary. Function of stigma is to receive pollen grain and that of ovary is to produce female gamete and produce seed. Pollination The process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower is called pollen grains. There are two types of pollination self-pollination and cross-pollination. So here we are going to discuss the differences between self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination. It is the process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower. Whereas cross-pollination is the process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of different flower of same species. For self-pollination, external agents are not required whereas for cross-pollination external agents they are required self-pollination does not help in variation whereas cross-pollination it helps in variation fertilization the fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote is called fertilization Zygote it is a fertilized ovule and it is formed by the fusion of male and female gametes. Here is a diagram showing the process fertilization in flowering plants.
so here we can see the diagrammatic whiskers uh, showing the life cycle of flowering plants flower it has uh, uh, flower the male part of flower is stamen whereas female part it is pistil stamen produce pollen grain whereas pistil uh, pistil uh, it contain uh, three parts uh, stigma style and ovary so pollen grain transfer from uh, Anther to stigma, the process is known as pollination, and uh, after pollination, so male and female gamete fuses with each other, known as fertilization. After fertilization, zygote is formed, and the fertilized uh, fertilized uh, uh, ovule is, uh, and the fertilized ovule later changes into seed, and the ripened ovary it is considered as fruit, and uh, again from seed. Uh, the seed rise, give rise to a plant under favorable condition and the process continues. Transpiration The process of removal of excess water from the plant body to aerial parts in the form of water vapor is called transpiration. So here are some reasoning questions from this unit. First one, new plants does not grow from a seed kept in a closed box or bottle. It is because in closed box or bottle there will not be sufficient air. Some of the seeds have cotton or plume. So some of the seeds they have cotton or plume for their dispersal from one place to another by wind. Next question: Leaf is modified into thorns where water availability is low. In order to reduce loss of water through transpiration more type of plants are available in riverside and lakeside it is because on the banks of rivers fertile soil sufficient amount of water and appropriate climate is available for development of plants now we are going to discuss few differences between first one differences between bacteria and virus Bacteria, they perform metabolic activities. Virus, they do not perform metabolic activities. Bacteria are very small in size. They are seen under compound microscope. Virus, they are smaller than bacteria. They can be seen only under electron microscope. Differences between plant virus and animal virus. Plant virus, they attack plants, whereas animal virus, they attack animals. Plant virus, they are less specific to their host, whereas animal virus, they are more specific to their host. Differences between radical and pumule. Radical, it is embryonic root, and pumule, it is embryonic shoot. Radical, it grows to a soil, whereas pumule, it grows away from the soil. Differences between pollination and fertilization. Pollination. It is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower. Whereas fertilization, it is the fusion of male and female gamete to form a zygote. After for pollination, pollen grain give rise to pollen tube. Whereas after fertilization, zygote is formed. By this, we have completed notes of this unit living beings i hope this video was useful to you if you like this video please share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you have any queries drop the comments in comment section see you on next video thank you